Pinapakinggan ko lang yung video tapos doon ako kumukuha ng ano, ng question sa quiz. So basically, ganun lang yung style ko. Okay, so we were talking last time about free space management. Okay. So the operating system will have to do some uh, free space management and we specifically talk about the malloc function which is part of the standard C library. And there are two main concepts that we discussed last time. The first one is uh, coalescing meaning if you have uh, contiguous so the, the idea here is you have a, you maintain the operating system maintains a list of free uh, available memory and this is an example so you have the free list and you specify the starting address and then the length of that chunk of memory now coalescing would mean uh, merging all of these free uh, free free chunks of memory into one so that you'll get you'll have a one big chunk big chunk of memory that you can use for allocation right? and uh, so we have splitting on the other hand is you have uh, uh, a big chunk of memory and then you split them right? so in this example you have this free list and then a request a one byte request is made and it is allocated, uh, that one bit is allocated, and what happens here is the free list, the address is updated, 21, meaning address 20 is taken already, and then the length now is 9. Okay. So, the, uh, I mentioned last time that when you use the malloc uh, function call, you have to specify the size or the amount of memory that the malloc function will allocate. Okay. However, the, the free function, which the counterpart of memory allocation, which the deallocation, does not specify the size, the amount of memory. It only accepts uh, a pointer. So how then does the operating system determine how much memory to free? Okay. So that is accomplished by a header block. Uh, block by a header field right, in the allocation. So what actually happens is that when you have something like this, uh, malloc uh, 20, the, the return pointer is actually uh, a little bit uh, beyond the actual memory allocated but the size is still 20, but before that, there is a specific header block that actually describes this chunk of memory. Right? So you can think of this as a metadata for that particular chunk of memory. And the free function can actually determine the size by just subtracting, by just subtracting the size of the header in this manner. So, this is how it's done. So if you're going to implement the free function, it's the pointer, and you can access the header pointer by just accessing the pointer itself and then subtracting the size of the header. If you have a header like this, and this is the content, these are the contents of the, the header that describes this chunk of memory. So in addition to the actual pointer uh, being returned by malloc, can, you also need to access to the header pointer and this is accomplished by simple uh, subtraction. I right, get the idea? So that's the, the essence of the uh, uh, free. Right. So I think we stopped last time. Where do we store this free list? Let's say you are asked to implement your own malo uh, function and then to implement your free function. Where do you store the free list. Okay. The idea is actually to embed the free list okay, to the free space uh, uh, to the free space itself. Okay. So you embed that in the free space itself. So if you are, let's say you have uh, 16 KB uh, 
heat, you embed in that heap the free list, right? Because the library can use malloc to build a list within itself. Right? So how do we how how do we approach that? How do we implement, how do we embed right, the free list in the free space? Right? So again, this is a list, right? If you recall in ComSci 1, 2, 3, there are several ways to implement. Actually, it's a linked list. Right? You can have a pointer-based linked list or you can have an array-based linked list. And this one here uses uh, a, li a linked list. Right? So you have to specify a node data structure. So I hope everyone can understand this. Type def struct underscore node underscore t. You have the size and you have a pointer to the next node. So going back to this representation, you have the size here and then you have a pointer to the next node. So that's the data structure to represent the uh, free list. And then uh, when building the heap, uh, you might confuse this with the heap data structure. The heap data structure is different from the heap that we're talking about here. Right? So the heap data structure is a priority queue data structure. But here we're talking about an area of memory allocated for a process for dynamic memory allocation. Right? So how is actually memory allocated for the heap? There is a function called M map, memory map, okay, and it returns a an amount of memories. For example, in this case, okay, the M map function okay, will allocate 4 KB, 4 KB of RAM for the heap. Okay. So this is actually a system call. Okay, for uh, mapping a virtual address space of the calling process, okay? and the starting address for the new mapping is specified in ADDR. Okay? And then you have the size here, the length, how many bytes to allocate for the heap. So, uh, I showed you before the when you load a process in GDB and you run info prop mapping. You will see the virtual address space of the process, and there is no, there is no heap yet. Initially, there is no heap yet because you are not using malloc in your uh, program, right? or malloc is not yet called. Right? It is only after malloc is called that the heap is created. Okay, you understand that? So if the heap is not yet created, if the first time you call malloc and the heap is not yet there, then mmap will be called to uh, generate that uh, free space. So you have here the different fields, okay? protection bits, okay? read, write, okay? and it's basically just or, or for the different properties, okay? Flag, uh, file descriptor, and some offset. And initially, so this is the first node. You can think of this as allocating the first node, and the first node contains 40 KB, uh, 4 KB of memory, 4, right, 4 KB. And the size is computed as 4096 minus uh, the size of the uh, node underscore T, node underscore T, and next is not. So at this point, the first time to, uh, to initialize the free list, okay, you have a big chunk of memory of 4096. Okay, do you follow? That's what is done here. And then, uh, <coughs> so this is actually what uh, will happen. Okay? So you allocated 4096, okay? uh, and the size, how many bytes uh, will this be? So let's assume this is eight bytes. Okay. So if we assume that uh, those the header is eight bytes, right? So this will be the uh, appearance of the first node. So you have uh, the size 
4088. Okay. This is the actual size, 4088. And this is the size of the header, 8, 8 bytes, okay. to get 4096 for the total. Do you follow? Do you follow? Okay. So, the actual size, this is the actual memory, memory that you can use for your program. But during the initial space, you have uh, 4096 all in all, including the header. So that's what we mean by that. And head will be pointing to this, uh, to this node, this entire node. And next is zero because you only have one, one node, okay? one big uh, node. Okay. Now, if a chunk of memory is requested, the library will first find a chunk that is large enough to accommodate a request. So, kanina ang available natin na memory ay uh, 40. Uh, 88. Alam mo, ito lang yung tingnan mo, 4088. Okay? So, maghahanap siya ng nag-request ka, nag-malok ka, malok 20 for example. So, makikita niya ngayon na, oh, meron tong ano, 4088 na size. Doon natin kukunin yung 20 na i-allocate natin. Okay? And, uh, the library will split the large free chunk into two. Okay? One for the request and the remaining, and the remaining free chunk. Okay, so kung 20 yung na-request mo, i-split yung malaking yon, and then meron ka ng 20 tapos meron ka ng remaining. Okay? And then you shrink the size of the free chunk in the list. Okay, binawasan mo. Okay? Uh, so here an example. Example, a request for 100 bytes by this code, PTR equals malloc 100. Okay. So, that means that you are actually requesting 100 plus 8. So, you allocate 108 bytes out of the existing one free chunk. Okay. And then, you shrink the one free chunk to 3980, which is 4088 minus 108. Okay. So, this is the original. This is the original... Uh, free list embedded in the heap. Okay. What will happen is if you request for 100, ito ngayon yung mangyayari. Okay. So the PTR, ito yung size na 100, itong header size ay 108. Okay. The size is 100, ito yun. Okay. And this is some checksum for uh, checking the values of this list. And you have here the, the state of the heap. Okay? So this is the entire heap. Okay? This is the entire heap. And this is the how it looks like now after allocating 100 bytes. You get? Do you follow? Okay. So here is a, a scenario where you have three 100 byte, uh, three 100 byte. Uh, allocation okay, after the initial uh, 4096. So you have here uh, this is one chunk, one malocol, another malocol, and there is this one is another malocol. Okay. So what happens actually is you find the large free chunk and then uh, you split that, okay, and then you allocate, basically just how you allocate the memory. Okay? Now, at this point, you only have one node in the free list. Okay? You have three nodes allocated, but you, only, you have three, three, uh, three memory area allocated, okay? but you only have one node in the free list. Okay? So, uh, in this scenario, 100 bytes is still allocated, but about to be freed. So, well, after malloc, you need to free. So, ito halimbawa yung if free niya. So, ang if free niya ay yung ang parameter niya sa pag-call ng free ay SPTR. Okay. So, SPTR. Free SPTR. What will be the behavior? What will be the uh, contents of the heap? Okay. So, example, free SPTR. The 100 bytes chunk is back into the free list Okay. And the free list will start with a small chunk. So, yung head nag-move na dito. Okay. 
And then, the list header will point to the small chunk. And yung next, ito yung previous header. You get the, you get the, the scenario here? Okay. So, ito yung initial state. Nung nag-free SPTR ka, ang mangyayari, itong magic na to, ipopoint mo na siya dun sa current head, tapos yung head mo, ipopoint mo na siya sa S pointer. Na, nasundan nyo ba yun? So, you have now two free list, uh, two nodes in the free list. This is the first node, and then this is the second node. Do, do you follow the scenario here? Okay. So, ganun yun. Naka-embed siya dito sa, ano, sa memory area. Okay. And finally, let's assume that the last two in-use chunks are freed also. Then, this will now be the contents of the free list. Okay. The head, ito yun. And then, may pointer siya dun sa next 100. Ito, 100. Yung size nito ay 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 3764. Okay. So, this is what you call external fragmentation. Kanina, initial state ng heap natin, 4088 yung laman niya. One big jump. Pero ngayon, habang ginagamit mo na yung heap, nag-allocate ka and nag-deallocate ka, naging fragmented ngayon yung heap mo. Marami ka ngayong nodes dun sa, uh, sa free list mo. Okay? So, what you can do is, again, pag nakita mo na uh, may, mga konti, may mga magkakasunod na nodes na pwede mong equalize, pagsamasamahin mo na para ma-reduce mo yung fragmentation. You get the idea? Okay, so that's what we mean by that. So, uh, I hope somehow ma-visualize nyo kung paano nag-ooperate yung malok, tapos yung free, tapos paano siya ina-allocate sa, uh, sa heap. Paano minamanage yung free list sa heap. Okay? Okay. So, growing the heap. Okay? Uh, normally, when you first create the heap, okay, di ba yung map natin, may, ano ka, may fixed size ka. What if lumampas na dyan? Diba? If you're using, uh, if your program is uh, doing some bioinformatics computations, sequence alignment, you have, you have a large string, okay, malok yun, gigabytes of, ano, of, uh, of uh, string, okay, ACTG, and you need to allocate that dun sa heap. Okay, paano pag hindi nakasya? So, normally, mag error lang yan, syempre, sabihin niya, not enough memory. Okay? Uh, or, later, we're going to talk about uh, uh, demand paging. Okay? Uh, but, normally, mag, mag error yun, sabihin niya na out of memory. Or, there is a system call called uh, break and s-break which is used, yung break na yan is actually used to uh, mark the end of the heap or start at the end of the heap and then you can have uh, ito, isang chunk to okay? so sa virtual other space niya, you can increase that and you can actually find a different uh, segment okay? or actually page later if it was later, kung saan siya ilalagay so, Sa virtual, again, sa virtual address space, contiguous pa rin siya, pero dun sa physical memory, okay, syempre, pwede siya magkahiwalay. Kasi halimbawa, ito fixed size na page siya. Okay? But there is a functionality called uh, s and BRK. Okay? Okay. So, uh, I've shown this already uh, before. Okay? In the memory API. In the, the, in the chapter on memory API, the S-break uh, system call. Okay, so how do you manage, next question, the next topic is how do you manage the free space? Okay? So, kanina, uh, sabi natin dito, if you need uh, a certain amount of memory, okay, okay, you will find, you will first find a chunk that is large enough to accommodate the request. Kanina, initially, yung heap natin, 4096 yung memory niya. Nag-request ka ng 100. 
kayang-kaya mong ipasok yun dun sa 1496. Bawasan mo lang yun, and then you update the uh, the head, the value, the size. Okay? So, ilagay mo na, yun na yung return mo, yung pointer dun sa memory area na yun. Okay? Now, itong task na finding large enough, there are it's also pa, there are pa, there are different ways to find this uh, large enough space, okay? and we have different uh, algorithms for this, similar to the uh, CPU scheduling. Okay? So the first one is called the best fit, uh, finding uh, finding free chunks that are big or bigger than the request. Okay? and returning the one of smallest in the chunks in the group of candidates. Okay. So, basically, you have, you have a possible uh, 100. Yung available dun sa free list mo, may 101, may 110, may 200. Ang i-return mo ay yung, ano, pag best fit, yung 101. Kasi yun yung pinakamalapit eh. 100 ang hinihingi mo, may available na 101, 110, saka 200. Kasya lahat doon, yung 100. Pero ang ibibigay mo ay yung 101. Kasi just enough. Okay. Yung worst fit naman, you find the largest free chunk and allocation, uh, allocate the amount of the request. Okay. Keeping the remaining chunk on the free list. So kanina, kung 100 yung Kung 100 yung hinihingi mo, meron kang 101, 110, saka 200. Ang ibibigay mo ay ano, yung 200. Ba? Yung 200 kasi worst fit nga. Eh. Yung first fit naman, finding the first chunk that is big enough for the request. Uh, returning the requested amount and, rema and remaining the rest. Okay. So, what it means, yung first fit, ang ginagawa niya, Di ba, meron kang free list. So, ang nakalagay doon ay 101, 110, 200. Trinaverse nyo yung, ano, trinaverse nyo yung free list. Unang nag-hit yung 101, di ba? So, yun yung i-return nya. Okay? Kung ganun yung state ng free list natin. Okay? And yung next fit naman, uh, finding the first chunk that is big enough for the request. Pero, yung next fit, hindi ka na maghihit, maghihit, magsisimula sa start ng, sa head ng list. Okay? Kung baga, meron kang temporary pointer, oh, dito hum huminto yung last request. Pag may nag-request na uli, doon na mag start yun. You can think of this as a circular, kung baga, circular link list. Okay? Yun yung ibig sabihin ng next feed. Okay? So, apat yon best, worst, first, and next. Okay? Ah, ito pa lang, example pa lang dito eh. Okay. So, ito yung contents ng, ano, ng head. Ito yung free list mo. Request mo ay 15. Okay. Uh, tama ba? Uh, so, kung 15... Oh, so, so, 10, 30, 20. Tama ba yung mga nito? So, okay. so, ito yung original state ng list. And then, you have pag best fit, Saan pwedeng magkasya yung 15? Dito sa dalawa lang, di ba? Dito sa dalawa lang. So, ang pinaka-best dyan ay 20. Dito mo ilalagay. So, 20 minus 15, 5. You get the idea? Tapos yung worst fit naman, yung 15, kasya sa 30, sa 20. Since worst fit, ilalagay mo siya dito sa 30. So, 15, uh, 30 minus 15, 15 na lang yung matitira. You get the idea? So, another approach in addition to those techniques is called segregated list. Ibig sabihin, ito kasi parang global list ito. Think of uh, multiprocessor scheduling where, wherein you only have one queue for the ready processes. Ito, ito example na to, this is uh, global uh, free list. Okay? So, one solution is to have a uh, segregated list. Hiwalay na list, right? So, keeping free chunks in different size in separate lists for the size of the popular request. Uh, parang sa 132, yung common, alam uh, parang make the common case fast. Sabihin, ito, lagi itong hinihingi ng kernel, nag allocate siya ng page or ng uh, locks. Okay? So, gawa tayo ng uh, a list para 
lahat ng memory na kailangan sa locks ay doon kukunin sa list na yun. Okay? So, yun yung ibig sabihin ng segregated list. Okay? So, the complication would be how much memory should, uh, should be dedicated to uh, the pool of memory that serves the special request. So, that means, okay, magawa tayo ng list, free list para sa mga locks na hihingiin ng operating system. Okay? So, gaano kalaki yun? Ilang nodes ang pwedeng i-allocate natin doon. Okay? So, uh, one solution, one technique yung tinatawag na slab allocator. Okay? So, ito gumagamit ng list, uh, ng segregated list. Okay? So, you have different lists for different data structures. Okay? Uh, it's, called, it's called slab allocator. So, allocate a number of object caches. Okay? So, the, okay, ito pala, sabi ko kanina, lax, file system, inodes, etc. Okay? And, in, so, kung baga, meron kang general or global na memory allocator and then meron kang specific for, for specific uses. Okay? So, ang mangyayari doon, uh, kukuha ka muna from the global tapos i-allocate mo doon sa specific na data structure na gusto mong i-allocate and then pagtapos na, i-merge mo ulit siya sa global. So, parang ganun yung sistema dito. Okay? So, that is the slab allocator. Okay? Uh, I think this was implemented in Solaris. Initially implemented in Solaris. So, the other one is called uh, body allocation. Okay? I think in Linux, it's also used the slab allocator. Okay? Uh, the next one is yung, uh, body allocation, binary body allocation. The idea here is uh, the allocator divides free space by two until a block that is big enough to accommodate the request is found. Okay? So, uh, the example, the example 7 KB. Okay? So, you have a large chunk of memory, 64 KB. Nag-request ka ngayon ng 7 KB. Okay? So, ang gagawin sa body allocation, yung 64 KB, Ahatiin niya. So, dalawang 32. Kasya na ba dyan yung, ano, yung 7? Hindi, masyado pang malaki. Hatiin natin uli. 16 KB. Kasya na ba dyan yung 7? Kasya na, pero masyadong malaki. Hatiin natin uli siya. 8 KB. Uh, kasya na ba yung 7? Oo, oh, kasya na yung 7. Kaso masyadong malaki. So, 8, hahati mo sa dalawa. Okay? 4, 4. Kasya na ba yung 7 doon? Hindi na. So, 8KB na yung gagamitin natin. Okay? So, that's what we mean by binary body allocation. Yes? Sir, why did we allow someone to start sucking out of the other one? Pwede rin naman. Ito tayo, 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 ito So, you start with the the largest and then you divide. Compare na mag short, mag short, mag short na sa babala. Ang purpose niyan is pag na-free na siya, diba, tapos kung nandibitin yung 7, pag na-free na siya, tapos free din yung kabila, pwede mo na siya emerge. So, diba parang ang goal natin is madali i-coalish yung mga contiguous memory niya. So, possible na magkaroon yung uling mo ngayon spaces sa Ah, possible na magkabuhin mo yung mga spaces. Depende sa memory. So, hanggat hindi pa ano yan, hindi pa na-allocate yan. Sa luwa, kung muna dito, so, pero yun yung sinasabi na, yung sinasabi dito na, internal fragmentation. Yung sinasabi mong mga bungi-bungi. So, yun yung because of the internal fragmentation. So, it can suffer from internal fragmentation. Okay? But, yung pag-coalice niya ay mas madali kasi yung katabi niya lang eh. Madali lang immersion. Okay? So, that is a chapter. So, I hope this chapter uh, somehow ma-realize nyo, ah, yung pala kung ano nangyayari sa Malok, okay, may free list pala yan, tapos yung free list na yun, nandun din pala yun sa hip nilalagay pag-manage yung free list na yun. Okay? So, 
The next uh, topic that we're going to look into is uh, paging. Okay, paging. Paging. So, ano ba yung paging? So, iti-trace back ulit natin yung history, no? Meron tayong large chunk of memory. Okay. Yung unang technique natin para hindi fixed yung ano, hindi fix yung paglalagay ng program natin sa memory. We introduce yung base and limit register, base and bounds register. Para kung meron kang isang process, di ba yung process meron siyang code, data, stack heap. Pag may base ka, tapos yung bounds niya, doon mo lang magkakasama sila, contiguous space. Yun yung initial design para virtualization memory. The next stage, the next step, uh, kumbaga technique is, use, uh, is to use segmentation. Okay? Yung idea ng segmentation, kahit yung mga sections niya o yung mga segments niya like code, uh, data, heap stack, kahit hindi sa isang contiguous memory area, pwede mo silang ilagay. Okay? So, kumbaga, in-split mo yon. So, kumbaga, bawat segment meron kang base, tapos meron kang limit or size. Okay? Now, yung segmentation, pwedeng variable yung sizes ng mga segments. Di ba? So, pwede yung code segment, 2K yung length niya, yung stock segment, pwedeng uh, 1K lang, yung hip segment, pwedeng 5K. Okay? Variable yung sizes ng bawat segment. Yung idea ng paging is, Okay, wag na nating variable, gawin nating fixed size. Okay? So that's the essence of paging. Okay? So paging splits up the address space into fixed size unit, unit called a page. Okay? So the segmentation, variable size logical segments. Okay? With paging, the physical memory is also split into some number of, uh, of uh, pages called a page frame. So again, when we talk of memory in 125, lagi natin iniisip, dalawa yan. May virtual memory, may virtual address space, tapos meron tayong physical address space. So yung virtual address space, okay, in-split natin into different pages. Tapos yung physical memory, in-split natin into different frames. And pareho yung size nila. Okay? Pwedeng four, usually 4 KB. Okay? Chunk. Okay? And we maintain a data structure called page table per process, which is which uh, whose purpose is to translate the virtual address to the physical address. I, do, you, do you follow that? Okay. And the advantages there are two main advantages of paging. The first one is flexibility. So it supports supporting the abstraction of address space uh, effectively. You don't need any assumption on how the heap or how the grow, stock grow and are used. So kan dun sa segmentation din discuss natin na pag magkukup di ba yung pag magkukupyut ka ng physical address kailan kung heap yung gagamitin mo kailangan isubtract mo yung address dun sa starting address ng uh, ng uh, physical uh, ng virtual address kung saan kung saan nakalagay yung heap. Okay. Dito, hindi. Uh, parang same-same na lang. Okay. And simplicity, the ease of free space management. Fixed size siya. So, wala kailangang, ano, wala kailangang uh, uh, additional data structure to uh, or fields para pag-maintain ng free list. Okay. So, we'll go over these uh, steps later. Okay. So, here is uh, just an example of uh, paging. Right? So you have a 128-byte physical memory. Right? So this is physical memory, 128 bytes, and uh, 16 bytes page frame. Right? So one page frame, physical memory, virtual memory, 16 bytes to, 16 bytes, 16 bytes, 16 bytes. Ang tawag dito isang frame. Ito naman, yung process. So, you, so you have a process. Yung process na yun, uh, will have 64-byte address space. 
and bawat slot sa kanya ay 16 bytes din. So, notice that the page size and the frame size are the same. Right? So, halos pareho lang ito nung, ano, nung segmentation, kaso, fixed size nga lang to, di ba? This is the main difference. So, pag nilagay mo siya sa main memory, pwedeng ito, nandito, okay? sa frame 3, okay? page 1, nandito, sa frame 7, page 2, nandito sa frame 5, and then page 3, nandito sa frame uh, 2. Uh, para hindi kayo ma-confuse, no? Pagdating sa virtual memory, virtual analog space, page na lang ang gamitin nyo. Tapos pagdating sa physical memory, frame na. Huwag nyo nang gamitin yung page frame kasi malilito pa kayo. Pag, pag sinabi kong frame, nasa physical memory yan. Pag sinabi kong page, nandun yan dito sa, ano, sa page table. So, notice na ito, for this particular process, wala na specify kung code segment siya, uh, data segment siya, stack siya, o siya. Doesn't matter. Right? Kaya wala na kalagay dyan. Right? Kahit saan man yun dyan, bahala ka. Pero ito program na sa SMP, parang gano'n. Isang file lang, tapos may mga labels, labels ka na lang, uh, section, section ka na lang na nilalagay, di ba? You don't care. Pero, parang tinitreat siya as continuous uh, as a space. Right? Because of the paging, yan isa. Okay? Unlike sa segmentation, ito, code segment to, ito, heap to, ito, uh, stack to. Okay? You don't do that here. Okay. So, the, the next question is, how do you translate, kasi eventually, this is the virtual address, how do you translate that to physical address? So there is a need for the address translation. Okay? So ito yung, ito yung running example natin. Okay? And to perform the address tra translation, you have to interpret the virtual address in this manner. So, kailangan mo natin magtinatawag na kung ito yung virtual address niya, kailangan mong merong field doon na nag-specify ng uh, page number niya tapos ito naman na nag-specify ng offset niya doon sa page na yun. Okay. So, notice na 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 bits yung ano. 6 bits yung uh, size ng address space natin. Okay. So, bakit 6 bits? Okay. Kasi 0 to 64. Ha? 0 to 64. Okay. So, 6 bits. Okay. So, ang gagawin natin dyan, kung kailangan natin ng apat na pages, itong uh, topmost 2 bits na to, siya yung gagamitin natin na page number. So, page 00, page 01, page 02. Uh, page 00, page 01, page 10, page 11. Ha? Para yan dito sa value na to. Okay? So example, if we have a virtual address 21 in the 64 byte address space. This is our 64 byte address space. Okay? Tapos, meron tayong 21. So yung 21, nandito yan. Somewhere here. Okay? So that 21... Pag kinonvert mo yan sa binary, that will be 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, okay, yung address space, okay, ito yung 0, 1, this is page 0, 1, bit, bit, uh, binary yun, okay? ito yung offset niya sa loob ng uh, page na yun. Okay? Do you, do you follow? Do you get the idea? So, yung parang essence dito, Pag meron kang ginamit na address dun sa address space na to, ibibreak down yan into two parts. The page number and the offset within the page. Ito, 21. Pag tinignan natin yan, 21, nandito yan. Sa area na to, within this block. Okay, that address. Split mo yan, 01, ibig sabihin, this is page uh, 01 in binary, tapos may offset siya dyan. So basically, uh, ano ba yung offset na to? Ano yung decimal ng ano? 2 to the 0, 1, 2, 4. 
5. Okay? So, 5. Offset 5 sa loob nito. Okay? Nasaan si page 1? Si page 1, nandito sa frame 7. So, ibig sabihin, 112 plus 5, yun yun actually yung location nung uh, yun actually yun yung location nung 21 na yun, dun sa physical memory. You get the idea? So, yeah, that's the essence of uh, Okay, it's the essence of uh, paging. So we we'll stop here, but this is the process. Right? So if you use 0, 1, using the address translation, 7 to, diba? two to the 2 plus 2 to the 1 plus 2 to the 0, 7 yan. Diba? So ang mangyayari, this is the physical address, okay? kasi nandito yan. Ah, nandito yan. Frame 7. Okay? So, Yun yung translation na nangyayari. Okay? Do you follow? So, we'll continue next meeting about uh, paging. But this is the idea. Okay? It's much better than segmentation. But actually, in the x86, kinocombine yung uh, segmentation and paging. Okay? So, uh, see you on...